Hey troops, welcome to the channel, Gen Did Commando here, and my name's Ryan, I'm a former Royal Marine from the United Kingdom, Great Britain, and today we're going to be reacting to the Centre of Excellence for the Armed Forces Mountain Services, alright, it's Sweden, Sweden's mountain um, kind of warriors, and yeah, these guys, these guys seem pretty cool, I've seen this video um, on a few different reaction channels now, so I want to I wanna get into it guys and see, um, and see what the crack is with the whole thing, so yeah, let's get straight into it troops so it's switzerland right hang on what we got in the around two-thirds of the country consists of mountains and often inaccessible terrain consider considering differences in altitude narrow valleys and steep mountains yeah so these guys uh, are warriors of the mountains basically okay and i'm really looking forward to this one if you are like share subscribe to the channel and let's just get into it troops <laughs> That's beautiful. Now I've been to I've been to Switzerland, guys. I think it's a fantastic uh, little country, and the scenery is spectacular. It's, it's some of the some of the most beautiful mountains I've ever seen in my entire life. But being able to operate in that environment from a military um, sense is frightening, actually. You know, unless you're extremely skilled, it's not just basic soldiering. This is advanced soldiering. Anyone who operates in the mountains, all right, with snow and cold and altitude, is an advanced soldier. It's um, it's a, a definitely a skill set that should never be underestimated troops okay so i have mad respect for anyone who operates in that environment i'm looking forward to see how the swiss do it switzerland around two-thirds of the country consists of mountainous or often inaccessible terrain Considerable differences in altitude, narrow valleys, and steep mountainsides. In order to navigate this landscape successfully while on a military exercise or... Right, that's pretty cool. Um, <laughs> in fact, when I was watching that, I thought that was a Royal Marine there. That's the kind of stuff that we were doing all the time in mountain and Arctic warfare training, okay? That's literally my cup of tea, that. Operation, mountain specialists are needed. Andermatt. Here in the heart of the Alps, the Centre of Excellence for the Armed Forces Mountain Service has been training mountain specialists for over 50 years. Wow. We carry out four different types of training. The first and most important type is training new blood, the mountain specialist recruits and NCOs. The second type is the training developed for other branches of the Swiss Armed Forces. The third are the international mountain training courses with participants from foreign armed forces. The fourth type is training support for other partners in the Swiss security network, such as police forces, the border guard, or other cantonal civilian authorities. The aim is always to ensure that mountain specialists can support other troops or the civilian authorities by carrying out their duties in the areas of combat protection and assistance in difficult mountain terrain in a highly competent and safe manner. Yeah, and, you know, in a highly competent and safe manner has to be kind of portrayed throughout everything they do because um, I can assure you guys, in, in the military, when I was in the Royal Marines, a lot of the stuff we did was um, was of a standard that would have would have scared civilian people okay you know there's a certain amount of rock face that you can climb unaided unsupported in the, in the royal marines where with kit on your back that you you just wouldn't do in 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 a civilian sense because it would be considered far too dangerous okay a lot of the things that i did in the royal marines especially orientated around the mountain warfare stuff was um was really scary all right i was i was quite a quite a What's the word? I, I wasn't really a confident climber. I could climb quite effectively, but um, I had a fear of heights that um, I actually gained from the military. All right, I wasn't wasn't really scared of heights when I was um, 
when I was a civilian, but when I went into the military, I had a few close calls on the mountainside that really just made me fearful of the mountain because there's certain safety things that um, can't be in place because of the nature of the beast, okay? When you get to the top of a, of a cliff edge or something, you're fighting through. You've got to be combat effective, and I get it. I understand it, but I, I'm certainly not going to sit here and lie and say I wasn't scared doing it because I was, guys. It was uh, a lot of the stuff that we did was very, very dangerous. Um, so the fact that they're putting a lot of emphasis on the safety aspect of it, mainly I'm guessing for the fact that they're probably going to be conducting mountain rescue operations, um, both in a military and civilian context, where people who are injured are going to need to get extracted off that cliff face um, in a safe and effective manner. And trust me, guys, you've got to make it safe because if you've already got an injured person coming off that cliff and it's not safe and they don't feel secure, it's going to be 10 times worse, okay? And that's where lives are lost. So I like this already. The recruits, who already have experience of alpine mountaineering, come here expecting tough and selective training. Thanks to the Center of Excellence's location, all the forms of terrain needed for training are right on the doorstep. To start with, along with undergoing formal training, practicing combat techniques and using weapons, the recruits are brought up to speed on rope techniques. Here they learn the basics for further, more demanding alpine training. For this, the Centre of Excellence whoa. employs whoa, whoa, whoa. external mountain guides as well as their own officers to pass on their knowledge to the recruits. Right, that's some crazy stuff what he's doing jumping off there. I mean, you've got to have a, you've got to have a lot of um, confidence to be able to do that kind of stuff, guys. It looks easy on TV, but in, in actual practice, it's, it certainly isn't. The goal is to fill the prospective mountain specialist backpack with a variety of skills, as it were, so that he can later deal with many different challenges in the mountains. the weather can change very quickly. The mountain specialist must be able to deal with these kinds of situations. Personal risk management teaches him to recognize dangers early on and to act according to the situation at hand. That is awesome, man. Look at that. Being able to kind of think confidently on your feet and score, you know what, I made a decision here. The weather's too bad. Let's get out of it. If you didn't know that, you wouldn't do it. And that can be life-changing, guys. Decision-making on the mountainside is absolutely paramount. In order to cope with demanding situations, good equipment is also needed. To ensure they have this, new equipment is constantly being evaluated and tested. It is very important to be able to train mountain specialists with current or new material. This simplifies techniques and increases safety. To test, for example, whether an airbag works out here on maneuvers, we get our soldiers to try it out. Mm. Right. This is just by sound stupid. What's an airbag used for? Is that used in case you've fallen down or something like that? Is that is that used in case of an avalanche? I mean, what is an airbag used for, guys? I don't know. Drop a comment below. In 
the final phase of the recruit school, the prospective mountain specialists must pass an exam by demonstrating their newly acquired skills, such as theoretical knowledge, technical know-how, and group leadership. In die Richtung. Das ist ein Gletscher, wir müssen uns natürlich anseilen. Dann laufen wir los. Los. Ja. Ja. If they pass this final exam, the soldiers are assigned to Mountain Specialist Division 1. They update their skills on annual refresher courses run by conscript officers and the professional personnel at the Centre of Excellence. This ensures that they are ready for rescue missions wow. or tactical deployments. That is really, really impressive. So that's how they would get, like, uh, the practice in, like, a downed down plane or something and they get a get a rescue a person from it that is that is really really interesting guys how they use that piece of apparatus that piece of equipment to save um to save life it's fantastic employment at all times especially if the operations take place in terrain or conditions that other troops cannot negotiate safely without the help of mountain specialists The mountain specialists are also employed as teachers in special courses for other branches of the Swiss Armed Forces. We're from the Career NCO School and are currently on a two-week summer mountain course learning how to move around safely in the field. Wow. It is important to have a good relationship with the participants. After two weeks of working together, I know what their strengths and weaknesses are, so I can offer them individual support. Mm. When the mountain specialists are around, you always feel safe. They know what they're doing and are masters of their craft. Yeah, again, the safety aspect comes into it, guys. Doing that kind of stuff is really, really fun if it's done correctly and safe. And you can understand if it's done correctly and safe just by partaking in it, guys. If you've got a smile on your face at the end of it, even those with the fear of heights, such as myself, can overcome things and continue it. I've always, I've always practiced this, you know. I've always said this. Out of ego, we'll pretend that we're not scared of things, okay? But uh, honesty, I was always honest to say, look, I don't like heights. I'm quite capable of doing certain things and quite capable of partaking in everything in, in the military that was uh, thrown my way. But I wouldn't lie and say it doesn't scare me. By being honest with it, I was able to get a little bit extra, um, a little bit more tuition. And it gave me that peace of mind that, you know what, I'm, I'm aware of the consequences of things not going wrong. So I'm going to make sure I do everything right by by just me being honest with myself and I think it's an important thing to be. The mountain specialists on deployment are not just refresher course soldiers. The Mountain Service Centre of Excellence also has a single term conscript unit. The single-term conscript unit is on standby to assist the armed forces or civilian authorities on the help and rescue operations, to find people who are missing, or to assist people who are stuck, or have had an accident in difficult mountain terrain. Our single-term conscript unit is ready for rapid deployment anywhere in Switzerland, 365 days a year, around the clock. Look at that, man. That looks spectacular. The Centre of Excellence in Andermatt is also a popular destination for military specialists and delegations from abroad. They benefit not just from the geographical location, but above all, from the profound knowledge of the mountain specialists. Mm. 
So we teach mountaineering as well, but uh, the mountains in Vermont where we come from are much smaller and we have much smaller pockets of alpine terrain. So uh, much of the focus is just on the steeper technical climbing. And so here you have so much terrain that requires different techniques to uh, move through efficiently and safely. And so uh, the Swiss instructors and guides have done a great job uh, introducing those to us and teaching us. We often get participants who themselves are instructors at a very high level in their own countries. It's great to broaden one's horizons in this way. Every instructor can learn from his pupils. Yeah, so in the British military, the um, the, the more famed kind of uh, Arctic warfare mountaineer and specialists are belong to the Royal Marines commandos, uh, the, the, uh, the men that I used to serve with. Um, arguably the mountain leader Carter is probably harder than and some would say the special forces um, selection process it's a very very arduous really really tough course um, certainly the the hardest course in in regular British military and um, yeah these guys are renowned across the world so I wonder if they have done any training alongside these that would be interesting to know Broad specialist knowledge and a wide range of skills make the mountain specialist an indispensable asset to the Swiss Armed Forces, whether as a member of his own unit or when supporting others in Switzerland and abroad. The Centre of Excellence for the Armed Forces Mountain Service in Andermatt aims to keep it that way. Right then, troops, that was a really, really good video of that. I really enjoyed reacting to it. It, um, yeah, you know, I've never really kind of had an opportunity to, to react on this country and their armed forces, especially the mountain forces. So Switzerland does have an awful lot to offer in terms of knowledge and uh, broadening my horizons. So I think I might try and react to a little bit more of their content. I really do enjoy this type of stuff, the military-based um, the military -based content. Yeah, I think we can learn a lot. So if you liked it, guys, please smash that like, share, and subscribe button. Drop me a comment below, and I'll see you next time. Peace. <laughs>